does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask what does he bring for me roses or books if someone has a stake in making you better that person will push you towards books books are what we all need छंदोग्य उपनिषद 5.1.1 टिल 5.1.5 वेरी इंट्रीगिंग एंड वेरी रिच वर्सेस वेरीली ही हु नोज द एल्डेस्ट एंड द बेस्ट ज्येष्ठम च श्रेष्ठम द एल्डेस्ट एंड द बेस्ट surely becomes the eldest and the best the one who knows the eldest and the best becomes the eldest and the best pran is indeed the eldest and the best given the condition because pran can be the eldest and the best only if the preceding condition is satisfied what is the condition it must know the eldest and the best then verily he who knows the richest becomes the richest speech is the richest a speech is the richest given the condition that it knows the richest verily he who knows the stable basis the foundation that is becomes stabilized in this world and the other worlds the eye is indeed the stable basis verily he who knows prosperity attains all desires both divine and human the ear is indeed prosperity then verily he who knows the abode becomes the abode of his people the mind is indeed the abode so you have pran you have eyes you have ears you have speech and then you have the mind a comparison is being made and a commonality is being pointed out who is the best what is pran first thing hmm? this entire uh, process the life long sequence of inhalation and exhalation that's pran that refers to the body that refers to the body so is the body to the best is the body the best among the senses and the mind there is a mind there is a body there is a senses who is the best the answer is the body is the best provided the body is devoted to the jeshth and the shresth to the eldest and the highest is the decision made and final now that the body is the best no no the speech is the best provided the speech knows the richest if you the speech knows the richest the speech becomes the richest talk of the richest come from the richest point within you let your words arise from the richest point within you and speech is the highest now the body is no more the best what does that mean neither is the body the best nor is the speech the best which is the tongue neither the eyes nor the ears not even the mind by themselves in themselves none of them have any value their value lies in their proximity to their surrender to the richest and the best what is the worth of the eyes infinite worth if the eyes are looking from the true center and looking truly at the world if the eyes can know the reality of the objects they are looking at 
then there is nothing higher than the eyes. The eyes are the highest. The eyes are the highest when they are connected to the highest. The ears are the highest when they are connected to the highest. The body is the highest when it is in the surface of the highest. The worth of your entire system is conditional. Your entire system has no inherent worth of its own. It draws its worth from the thing it is associated with. If the mind is associated with the highest, then the mind is indeed worthy. Otherwise, the mind is so base, worthless. Of no use are your ears, tongue, throat and eyes if they are being operated by, controlled by your lustful desires. If the ego is the master, then how can the slaves have any value? Let your senses not become slaves of a worthless master. It's as if all the senses and the body and the consciousness arising from the body are quarreling with each other. And they have gone to a wise master to settle the matter. And the master is settling the matter in such an insightful way. To the eyes he says, oh of course you are the best. Provided what is being said with respect to the eyes. Verily, he who knows the stable basis becomes stabilized in this world and the next, the eye is indeed the stable basis. Obviously, obviously. The nature of the eye is to keep rolling. No, The nature of the eye is, is to keep hopping from one object to the other. That's what the eyes do. They choose. The ears don't choose this much. If there is a sound, the ear is helpless in taking it in. But the eyes, they make an active choice. What I want to look at, what I don't want to look at. Can the eyes become stable? Stable in terms of their foundation. The eyes are hopping from object to object because they are being operated by the ego and the ego does not know what it wants and it wants a lot. Therefore, it keeps looking at all possible places to get what it wants. I want a lot and I do not know what I want. My name is ego. I want a lot. And I do not know what I want. I am definitely sick. But I am incapable of diagnosing my sickness. My name is ego. So what do I do? And my sickness includes my mental sickness as well. So what do I do? I keep going from store to store, shop to shop, pharmacy to pharmacy. And I take... Every single thing that's available and I keep popping it in. My name is Ego. I'm not stable. My name is Ego. Can the eyes become stable? The educate, adjudicating master says the eyes are the best if they can become stable. That's the judgment. The eyes are the best if they can become stable. And the Ego is the most unstable thing. That's why we keep rolling all our lives. No? no one thing gives us contentment. So the decision has been made in the eye's favor. The eyes are so happy. We have been declared as the best. But there is a condition attached. And it's the condition that's everything. The condition is... If you are coming from the right center, if you are following the right master, then you are the best. Such beautiful eyes. If they are coming from the truth. Such ugly eyes. Even if they have been cleaned and lined. Nothing in them. You are coming from falseness, you are looking for falseness. The ears are feeling disappointed. The adjudicator has something for the ears as well. What does he tell them? 
He who knows prosperity attains all desires, both divine and human. The ear is indeed prosperity. Now the ears are happy. Oh. Can the ears come from richness, prosperity? He who knows prosperity, the one who knows what real richness is about, is indeed the best. That's the way to be rich. Not accumulation, but knowledge. He who knows no richness, not accumulate richness, please. No stability, not attain stability. The entire emphasis is on knowing, not doing. Do you know what indeed is unstable? Do you know what indeed is constantly in flux? Always moving, roaming, meandering. Never still. Do you know that? That's the question. Do you know that? Know that! And you become the best, the richest, the highest, the most prosperous, the most stable. So the ears have an equal opportunity as the eyes. Be connected to the real center and you are indeed the most prosperous, the highest, the best, whatever. The mind is feeling left out. How about me? You know, please. The body has been told, if you can surrender yourself to the highest, then you are the highest. I loved it in... in in several places it has been said. What comes immediately to my mind is Mahalla Nova. The Guru says, I might not be quoting exactly, so someone may Google and help me with it. But the words are similar to Harijan Hari Saman hai. Harijan Har Antar nahi. If you can belong to Hari, there is then no difference between you and Hari, the highest that is. And that is the only way to attain highness or richness, worth, greatness, the only way. It's not accumulation that will take you there. It's right knowledge. And consequent action that will take you there. And right knowledge begets inevitably the right action. Then you don't have to worry about the thing to do. The thing happens on its own. The thing is not then called a doing. It is called a happening. With the ignorant one, things need to be done. With the surrendered one, things happen. It just happens. I didn't have to do it. I was choiceless. When you do something, then you have to put in effort and there is choice. When things just happen, then there is both choicelessness and effortlessness. Not worklessness. <laughs> Obviously work will need to be done, but the internal effort will not be there because there will be no internal resistance in the first place. Are you getting it? Verily, he who knows the abode becomes the abode of his people. The mind is indeed the abode. The one who knows the home, the seat, the origin, the place you come from, becomes that place. The mind's job is to know where you come from. And if the mind can know that, then the mind is indeed that place itself. Are we worthy in terms of the body being worthy, the eyes being worthy, the mind being worthy, the answer is yes and no. No, not at all. If you try to stand on your own, 
if you follow the wrong master. And yes, definitely yes, if you know who you are and therefore what your job is, let the eyes know who they are and then they will know what their job is. Let the hands, let the intellect, let the legs know who they are and then they will know what their job is. If you do not know who you are, how will you know your job? Can you work at any place if you do not know who you are, what your department is, what your profile is, what your job description is, how will you work? But that's the lot of entire mankind. We keep working our entire life without even knowing our job profile. And we are extremely busy. We get tired also. One day we retire and die. And all our life we didn't even know our employee code. We didn't even know whether we were employed at all. <laughs> we didn't know whether we ever received any remuneration. But we worked very hard. We worked very hard and we felt quite proud of it. I'm a self-made man. I've been working all my life. Were you even supposed to work there? The fellow very laboriously filled up his answer sheets for whole three hours. Just that he was answering the wrong question paper. <laughs> he didn't even know who he is, what his roll number is, and therefore which particular examination hall he was supposed to enter. Just as we wander about in life, he randomly entered some particular room at the examination center, picked up some random paper, and then with all his might, answered it all his life, the entire three hours. And then he wonders why life has failed him so miserably. Do you know which questions to answer? Do you even know who you are? If you do not know who you are, how will you know the right challenge to pick, the right question to answer, the right job to do, the right duty to espouse? Your entire life will be just carrying responsibilities without even knowing that they are not your responsibilities at all. The metaphor of the cuckoo and the crow. Hmm? The crow keeps taking care of the cuckoo's eggs, as they say. The crow does not even know whether he is first of all responsible at all. But he does not know himself, he does not know his duties, he does not know his job from the others. He spends his entire life doing something that he ought to have never taken up in the first place. And he is continuously wondering, why is life so unfair to me? Why is there no joy in living? Because you are doing something you never should have done at all. Obviously, you are not enjoying life. Obviously, you are struggling. Obviously, you are sweating it out. But just because you are putting in effort, rewards are not guaranteed. Before you start working, before you start with karm, gyan is needed. It is from gyan that your karm must arise. No gyan. 
and a lot of movement, lot of action. Just wastage and frustration. Getting it? Yes, questions. Pranam. Yes, Julius Ji. People are people are loving your question on G. Really? Nice. Yeah, they are, of course. Okay, but now I have a question on Jan. As you said earlier, that uh, knowledge has to precede action. Yeah. And this knowledge, uh, you mean that this knowledge is the knowledge of the factual state of oneself as the ego, unfulfilled ego. The knowledge before action has to be of the actor itself. Ah. But it's a constantly moving thing, right? It can't be otherwise, otherwise, you cannot have knowledge. Ah. This is very dynamic knowledge that you can attain only in the flux of life. It's like measuring the speed of water flow. If you want to measure the speed of flow, you have to measure it during the flow, in the flow. No? You cannot stop the water or freeze the water and then try to measure the speed. Similarly, life is a constant movement. So life can be known only in the movement. Hmm. I guess that, that's, that has been confusing me a little because uh, when I came back to Finland, I was actually, at first it felt a little depressing because I had the notion that coming to India would like, that something would happen, you know. Something will? Happen. Huh. Like my motivation or something would get a spike up. But then I realized that I had a notion that that kind of a motivation could come from somewhere outside of me. It just took me back to the same fundamental that nothing outside of me can inspire me to like really work. This is going a little off track, but I still want to say this. Uh, but no, it's just funny because I'm in the same situation as when I was before coming to India. But now it seems that I still have work to do in this situation. I guess it's then just fine because... See, how can soil and roads and brick and mortar give you fresh insight? What do you mean by India? India is just a notion. Hmm? When you come to a notion, you will miss the ocean. No? Hmm? So what do, you, what do you mean that you expected that when you will come to India, you will return with your uh, inner gates flung open? What exactly is India for you? What do you mean? You, you probably came to me. Right? And... And that nearness is not uh, something just physical or geographical. Huh? If anything was to be thrown open, that could have happened only if there was a, a willingness and, uh, and a realization that it is not the country that counts. Yeah. But the consciousness. Uh. Hmm? So, so that's the thing that happens with a lot of people from the West. They come to India thinking that the land itself will do something magical to them. The land will do nothing. In many senses, the country you are in is a better place than India. In many material senses at least. No? 
यू नो दैट वेरी वेल पॉल्यूशन ओवर पॉपुलेशन सो मैनी अदर थिंग्स यू आर ऑलरेडी बेटर प्लेस देयर देन इन इंडिया वॉट मेक्स इंडिया स्पेशल देन एटलीस्ट फॉर सम पीपल द राइट कंपनी द राइट इन्वायरमेंट द राइट प्रोसेस ऑफ सेल्फ इंक्वायरी नो यू हैव टू देन आस्क योर सेल्फ हाउ मच ऑफ सेल्फ इंक्वायरी डिड रियली हैपन हाउ मच वलरेबिलिटी डिड यू रियली एस्पाउज and it's a choice always to open up to come close and say i want to speak out i want to confess i want to talk about myself not about the experiences i am having in india what is the point in coming to india and uh, you know waxing eloquent about a particular uh, wedding ceremony one sees or a particular thing one sees on the road or a particular thing one experiences in the apartment is that what one comes to india for no one comes to india to probe himself to know himself now ask yourself how much of that did you really choose to happen it cannot happen on its own it just cannot happen on its own hmm. there is a process and the process is upanishadic the process is of deep discussion and deliberation the process involves opening up the process involves coming to the teacher talking nothing about this and that talking only about oneself who am i what my life's challenges are what do i do the entire day how my mind functions uh, what my fears my insecurities are what do i want if you talk of this then of course india can bless you with something very magical but india's blessings cannot be foisted upon someone one has to first of all be prepared for those blessings one has to first of all be deeply in love for with and desperate for those blessings so the more you exhibit your desperation the more madly you are in love with realization the more you will find india is working for you otherwise india is just an overcrowded place not very different from any other place in the world but i mean i kind of thought about this on my own but it did require coming there you know that i had to say that uh as i said that there was just too much confusion on my side I sometimes felt that I didn't know what I was doing there. It was just like it was. It was your virgin attempt. <laughs> Try again. Yeah. Try again. Huh? You'll you'll have to make yourself land in another India. India is not one thing. India is a million different things, and they are hierarchical. There can be the greatest India you meet. and there can be a very mediocre india you land at it depends on your choice what do you want to take away from here body identification julius body identification when one is identified with the body which is our fundamental nemesis then one is identified with everything that is physical the body is a basic physicality no and when there is body identification then there is identification with soil because the body is soil so one thinks that by landing in a particular geography something important will happen that is akin to thinking that the body is important if the body is important then land is important huh? if the body is who you are then the land is the guru and then you will miss the guru by the way i was seeing it happen all the time i know i was seeing it day by day how you were missing it i know me too oh, i know you are already all knowing huh <laughs> you know so much <laughs> yes 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 too much <laughs> 
yeah. But it had to go that way, I guess. Obviously, obviously. You see, it's necessary. It's necessary yeah. that one realizes the immensity of the possibility and one realizes how easy it is to miss it. How one can be very, very close and yet far from being intimate. Yeah, and I mean, I felt bad for, you know, I just felt like I was wasting your time there all the time. It was kind of... My time is wasted when I do not get to solve real problems. If I am solving real problems, that's the best utilization of my time. So could you come up with something real? I would have loved it. Mm. But if I'm not coming up with anything real, does that mean that my lifestyle is not what else? Possible? What else is it that matters to you, Julius? What is what else matters to anybody? Climate change? Huh? What else is it that matters to anybody? Why do we want to talk about anything else under the sun? It's your life. That's the fundamental unit of your challenge. Hmm? Everything arises from there. Even the global problems come from our own misled minds. No? So one has to talk of one's mind. That's all that is there to talk of. Think now of all the days you spent here. And think of what you spend them doing. And then you'll be surprised big time. How could I miss it so completely? So near yet so far. Hmm? You know the Upanishads put it this way. It's a beautiful quote. Tad dure tad avantike. Hmm? Near and far. That's near. That's very far. Very very near yet very very far. <laughs> I have people who are with me since years. And they are very, very far. One day when they'll be even physically far, that's when probably they'll wonder, much like you, how did we miss it so completely? How did we waste all our years? Yeah. But it, it was actually funny talking of the distance now because uh, when I got sick, at the later part of the trip. I got most out of the session I was watching from afar. I don't know why, but in the session yeah. hall, it was really exactly. hard for me to... Exactly, that's what, that's oh. what. Nearness is such a deception. Nearness is such a deception. It makes you miss even that which you were receiving when afar. There in Europe, you are probably receiving more than what you did sitting right in front of me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because you thought that you were near. Hmm? That's what the, the senses uh, make us feel. I'm already near. If I'm already near, why do I need to be attentive? If I'm already near, then... I'm eligible to expect a miracle. And the miracle is not happening. So I'm frustrated. But you are not near at all except in the physical sense. Right at this moment there is greater intimacy than there was over the period of that month. Hmm? 
because you see it is not the body that matters it is mental closeness and availability that matters that's why i asked you about what constitutes india for you the airport the city the roads the apartment what do you mean by india did you come to have a taste of the soil hmm? did you want to have an experience of the newly built airport that's why you landed here that's what we forget just as we don't remember why we took birth in the first place we also forget why we have come to a place at all hmm? you look at the people around do you think they realize why they stand born no we don't know we don't know the purpose of life just as we don't know the purpose of life we also do not know or we rather forget the purpose of our visit or journey and we just get lost and then we wonder why such disappointment why am i returning empty handed just as we die empty handed we also take off empty handed but do you think it's then all right if i just continue the current thing and try to just see what comes out of it or is that wrong you will have to proceed on the pilgrimage uh, once again hmm so at the time when you feel ripe rather at the time when you feel desperate yeah. and this time with far greater care so that you don't miss it again yeah hmm with more care and uh, fewer expectations and with your defenses down mm. Mm. it's it's important to be to be disappointed initially at least mm. Mm. you'll probably not get the context but there is a there's a pop song that comes to my mind hmm? so it's in hindi so it's it's a usual song written in in context of the two genders and the common type of love but the lines become meaningful even in other dimensions hmm? मोहब्बत भी जरूरी थी बिछड़ना भी जरूरी था अदरवाइज यू विल नॉट रियलाइज दैट द मोहब्बत वॉज फेक एंड दैट विल नाउ एनेबल यू टू एंटर ट्रू मोहब्बत मोहब्बत मीन्स लव सो लव वॉज नेसेसरी सो वॉज एस्ट्रेंजमेंट पार्टिंग ऑफ वेज इफ यू डू नॉट गेट डिसीव्ड इन लव हाउ विल यू रियलाइज दैट योर लव वॉज फेक टिल नाउ so meeting disappointment is very very important yeah. and that is not the end that is now the beginning of real love enter it so that you can be duped by it so that you end up disappointed and frustrated and that ending is then a new beginning mm. hmm and it's 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 such a relief actually to realize realize that you've been just deceived <laughs> it's and very that's reason, and, and that's the reason i i didn't uh, interrupt the process i was seeing i was seeing the the process of uh, failure happen very clearly but zaruri tha hmm it's a it's a beautiful song i mean uh, sanjay will definitely remember the other lines what else was zaruri tha ha that is fine uske aage kya hai bahut achhi line hai हम्म 
दिल इज ब्यूटिफुल आइन इट सेज मिली हैं मंजिलें फिर भी मुसाफिर थे मुसाफिर हैं इट इज़ ओनली वेन यू कम टू योर ड्रीम डेस्टिनेशन दैट यू रियलाइज दैट देर इज स्टिल अ लॉट ऑफ डिस्टेंस टू कवर मिली थी मिली हैं मंजिलें फिर भी आई हैव कम टू द डेस्टिनेशन एंड आई रियलाइज आई एम स्टिल अ पैसेंजर अ ट्रेवलर otherwise you will think that you have arrived when you have not therefore it is important to chase something like ithaka so that you may reach there even if only to be disappointed and that disappointment will be a curtain raiser something new will open up मगर भटके तो याद आया भटकना भी जरूरी था इट्स वेन यू आर लॉस्ट दैट यू रियलाइज दैट वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू बी लॉस्ट अदरवाइज यूड हैव केप्ट टेलिंग योर सेल्फ एंटरटेनिंग योर सेल्फ इन द नोशन दैट यू आर होम इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट दैट लाइफ बाय वे ऑफ शॉक एंड डिफीट reveals to you that you are still very far from home and that mind you is not inauspicious that's wonderful because now at least you'll be more careful yeah it's a relief really it's a relief because there is no shame in knowing what you really are Yes. It's only in the this strange deception where there's this tension. You know, you know, one there was this Kargil conflict, and uh, one Indian soldier was awarded one of the gallantry awards for something quite peculiar. Hmm? Listen to it. they did not know the location of the enemy guns the the large guns i'm talking of the 165 mm guns huh? that uh, shell artillery over long distances so those guns are there and how do we locate where those guns are we locate them when they fire and their projectiles land then by tracing the trajectory of the projectile you come to know where the enemy's guns are positioned right but the enemy wants to hide the location of their guns so what does the enemy do the enemy tries to not to fire for as long as possible because if they fire then you will come to know where their guns are it is from that direction that the shells are coming and that's the trajectory they are taking this is the velocity this is the height that is the angle so you can very quickly calculate where the guns are situated so they were not firing so one indian soldier with his team they decided to expose themselves to the guns they said we will make the enemy fire we will make the enemy fire and by that we will know where they are hiding their guns and once we know where they are hiding their guns we can target their guns hmm? we can either bomb their guns or we can we can target their guns using air power our our planes can go there and destroy their guns so they them they they deliberately made themselves available to the enemy they said we are here now fire the enemy had no option but to fire at them because they were constantly inching closer to their positions so then we fired the enemy fired the soldiers were killed but uh, their colleagues came to know of the enemy guns position and for this they were given gallantry awards so it's sometimes very important that you allow the enemy to fire at you 
and you suffer damages. If that happens, obviously you suffer, but at least now you know where your enemy is. Otherwise the enemy remains hidden. That's why it's important to sometimes suffer at the hands of Maya. When you suffer, then you know where she is hiding. When you suffer, then you know where she is hiding. Otherwise her guns remain hidden. Hmm? That's the reason I sometimes ask our friends here in both Sthal and around to enter into Maya's very den, very layer. When you enter her den, then you will know how dangerous she is. So I push them into Maya's den. You go there. You go, you go, you make out, you make merry, you go, you drink, you do all those things, go. If you do not do, do all those things, then you will never discover her firepower. You have to come close to her to see how dangerous and how ugly she is. From a distance, she will appear very beautiful and very alluring. Hmm? You have to allow her to fire at you. I repeat, you will suffer damages, but you will come to know where she is hiding. Hmm? So it's alright, you have suffered a certain damage, but now you know where she hides within you. Next time, be more careful. Thank you. Pranam Acharji, uh, during Bhagavad Gita session, you have told that uh, go beyond beyond the material or beyond uh, uh, your body and uh, in recent Bhagavad Gita session also you have told uh, uh, know uh, who uh, know f from your mistakes uh, what you are doing and uh, today also you have said uh, know uh, who you are so whether going beyond from the material or beyond from the body is same to that of like knowing uh, same thing same, same thing. thing knowing is beyondness to know is to be beyond wonderful that which you know is that which you are now free of know it and be liberated hmm? vedanta is extremely clear clear about it knowledge is liberation okay one more thing, uh, in recent Bhagavad Gita session, you have told uh, about Nirmam. Uh, Nirmam. Nirmam, yes. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you have told like, uh, my, uh, like, uh, regarding, uh, um, I don't know exactly Hindi words, but uh, uh, you have said. Nirankar, like, Nirmam, Nispraha, uh, yeah. Gatavasana. Yeah. But uh, regarding Nirmam, uh, you have said like uh, uh, Mera, uh, I, I think that Mera, Mine, mine, mine. Uh, I uh, always think. And uh, after that session, I have observed myself like uh, who I am, like whenever I speak, I speak to someone, I observe myself, I always use I, I. And this observation, who is observing? that who I am, uh, who is saying this I, uh, is that uh, the observer is also again saying, uh, <laughs> don't know who, who is observing it. Then go beyond the observer. If you, you observe something and then you observe the observer as well. That's what observing, but uh, don't know again who is that. So then go beyond that as well. Beyondness is, that's the reason so much fun. If you can detect even the observer, then the observer has become the observed. Hmm? So become the observer of the observer. Everything that can be observed must be observed. The observer just by the dint of his name hmm, does not uh, become uh, exempted 
from the purview of observation. There is no VIP list here. Everybody will be frisked. Everybody will be inquired into. Everybody will be observed. Thank you. Ajay ji pranam. Um you mentioned that uh, let your words arise from the richest point within you. Ajay ji I feel very un- uncomfortable in uh, uh, places or in situations when where some casual talk is going on I I feel very hard to engage in the conversation so I tend to remain silent. Uh sometimes I feel that uh that is wrong sometimes i feel that it is better to stay silent and not speak where i am i i am speaking just for the sake That's of that's the reason words. you must be pushed into casual places of your choice then you will find that you are no more silent lovely casual places there you will find you are barking for 6 hours on a trot then you will realize that it is not casualness you dislike so much it is something else that you like a lot how about beautiful casual places what's your response there i am understanding it acharya ji so is it uh, that i am not getting a chance to speak there it is just that you have so deep desires that where your desires are not being fulfilled there you become uncomfortable your discomfort is not with casual people your discomfort is with the frustration of your desires if desires are being fulfilled then you will be very happy with casual stuff so ajay ji how to how to come out of this you know you have to see your desires you have to be wise with your desires you must know how to deal with your desires and sometimes trick them and sometimes even fulfill them you know bribe them a little why not hmm? some of their demands can be met occasionally hmm? that's part and parcel of dealing with them hmm? if you do not know the entire landscape of desires and if you do not know their root then you will never know how to engage your desires and how to channelize them you will just be in fact afraid of your desires so afraid that you will start declaring that you do not have them at all see just because you are indifferent to certain things that does not mean you are a detached personality it simply means that you are so desirous that you are indifferent to the places where where your desire is not being fulfilled for example you do not have any real relationship with anybody here you are not friends with anybody hmm you are always in a state of indifference that does not mean that you have achieved enlightenment or that you love renunciation a lot or that you are supremely detached in relationships it simply means that you are looking for one relationship with something very desirable and you are so much keen for so deeply desperate for that one relationship that all other relationships you have no value for so sanjay is here you say sanjay who wants to talk to sanjay i am looking for my princess charming and i am so desperate i am so desirous i am so lustful that except for her i will not speak to anybody so i have no relationship with anybody here this merely proves that among this entire lot you are the most lustful and most desperate but acharya ji there is a problem what is the solution uh, that the i the solution is to acknowledge this first of all 